we are good to go now. I'm going to um, start the recording very soon. I had to um, check my video setting. It was telling me my virtual background was off. No problem. I'll be waiting. Thank you. Um, thank you for connecting with us today on this meeting. Let me see. Going through a divorce or separation can be incredibly challenging and um, it is essential for us as a community to support people as um, individuals to support people who are going through either divorce or separation. hence the reason for this meeting. So thank you everybody for taking our time to join the meeting and thank you so much ma'am for honoring this invitation. I am sincerely grateful. I'm sorry for the big soap and sorry for the network problem and the connection and everything. Thank you. I'm sorry. That's fine. You're welcome. Thank you everybody for taking our time to join this meeting and thank you to those who are going to watch the recording. I am sincerely grateful. Thank you for your time and thank you for um, connecting with us on this um, meeting tagged finding healing after divorce or separation. So it's like, it's a, going to be an interview. It's an interview. I'm going to ask some questions and um, Dr. Ibu is going to answer. And if you have any questions after the meeting, you after the interview, you can just ask your questions. So she's going, to, she's going to do justice to the questions. Thank you. So, ma'am, would you be able to tell us a little background about yourself? We would like to know you, please. All right, thank you everyone for joining and um, well done um, Inazim for this beautiful opportunity to be on your platform. So my name is Dr. Ebunlomo Faole. I am a professional guidance counselor. I, I have been on this journey of transformation since uh, 2016. And I can attest to the fact that if we choose to work on ourselves, li our, life, our life is our life becomes different. So I am a professional guidance counselor with a PhD, like as I mentioned, and um, I'm also a certified practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming and also the family systems engineering certification. I currently work with a community of divorced men and women, and it's been an amazing journey helping people to find their foot back after um, the elephant in the room that we all don't want to talk about after divorce. So it's a privilege to be here and I believe we're gonna have a good time together on this call. Thank you, Inasil. Thank you so much. Um, would you be able to say a little bit at the moment before we start about um, your community that helps divorce men and women before we can I'm going to ask you some questions about the community. So we would want maybe a little background about the community first before we start. All right. Um, so like I mentioned when I was talking about myself, I started this journey in 2016 and this was um, shortly after my divorce. And I discovered that when I was getting divorced, when I was having those issues, I really did not have anybody around 
to assist, to be like, okay, I've gone through it. And this was what I did. This is my result. You can see, you know, I looked around and I didn't get anybody I could emulate. So what I meant was that it's not as if there are no divorced people around me. Of course, I had a lot of them, but there were no people that I could say, I want to be like you if this thing happened to me. I look at the people around me, sad looking people, you know, just divorced people, women around me, sad looking people, they are not happy. And I look at myself, I'm like, is this what I'm, is this what my life will become eventually? And since then, I, I just told myself, no, uh, probably God wants to use me to change the narrative. It can be better, you know, and so I made up my mind to do it that. So I, along the journey, I started a group we call ourselves the balanced woman. So it's just for female alone and not divorced people because people don't come out to say they are divorced. It was a taboo. It's my 13th year now. So it's been a while, not this time that the social media is a gog and everybody wants to leave their marriage. Then there were no people coming out to talk about. So it was a shameful thing to say you are divorced. So you don't want to come out to talk about it. So I started that community of the balanced woman and I had different women, married, single and all of them. But I used that platform to say the things I'm learning on the journey. So when I met um, Praise in 2017 and um, we, start, we got talking, did my therapy, started my own transformation journey fully. And um, after I did my family systems engineering certification course in 2020, then I had the boldness to really say, okay, I want to do this for divorced people. But I didn't know how to start, but I know that I had a promise. I knew that I had it inside me, that God was set to use me to change the narrative. How? I don't know. And so I host family meetings, host different meetings for women, different meetings talking about family. But that need, that need was still there to talk to married, um, divorced men and women. And in 2020, praise for we just called to say, yeah, guys, let's start this community. Let's do it. Ebu, you can do it, you know. So um, we set up the group and um, I think the rest is history. Um, we have the Sunshine Hub community. The Sunshine Hub community, currently we are about 150 men and women in that community, a vibrant community where people open up to talk about their pain, talk about the things they go through, talk about their challenges in co-parenting with their exes, talk about raising their children alone, you know, and um, we're able to also um, conduct therapy sessions, clarity sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions with them. And um, of course, we've hosted several hangouts too. And this community cut across people from different part of the world um last year they had the dallas texas dallas hangout um this year they had the uk hangout we had lagos hangout we had abuja hangout but it's a vibrant vibrant community that people get healing people make friends and um life is more easier you know i say something that divorce is not the end of your world it's not the end of your life is actually an opportunity to start all over again. And these people are starting all over again, living their life in happiness. Are we going to say there are no hitches? Of course. We still have it, but it's not as bad as you don't have a support community. So Sunshine Hub is a very strong support community for divorced men and women. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for that.
um, before I continue, I just would like to let everybody know that Dr. Ibon is my, was my, oh, and still, I think, my syndicate mentor when I was um, doing the family life certification course. I did the family life certification course under um, Chris Fogore International for Society for Family and she happened to be my syndicate mentor and that was how I found her. Well, that was how she found me somehow. And that was how I found her. And I'm really glad that she's here and we're doing this together. Thank you so much. Um, someone wanted that avoidance and inaction create the sense of hopelessness during divorce and actually even makes you depressed. And so the sooner you address the issue or the sooner you take control when you have when you're going through situations like divorce or separation or even grief, the less you suffer and you recover faster. So where does somebody going through divorce or separation start from? Hmm. That's that's a beautiful question. Um, people going through divorce, where do you start from? So what I tell people is the first thing to do is to take responsibility for the things you did to contribute to the death of your marriage. Very important. Is to take, sorry, please, I need to check. Is this, is this um, audio clear? It's like it's bouncing back kind of. Very clear on my end. Very important. Yeah, it's very clear on my end. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. My I yes, can hear you. very clear. Okay, so I was saying that um, the first thing to do is to sit down. Okay, so let me start this way. Divorce is a very, very painful, terrible experience that any human being can go through. It not only causes you sadness, it steals a part of you. It's still part of your confidence. Steals you. And if care is not taken, you will be drowning in the grief so the first thing to do not only when you find yourself in that situation where you feel disappointed you're feeling all the emotions the sadness and you're grieving the first thing to do is to calm down divorce has happened mm. it has happened so the already first thing to what is the way forward and you see, you can't move forward if you don't do some background check. And the first thing to do is to sit down, stop playing the blame game. You know, we are good at that. Oh, it's the one that he did this to me. She did this to me. She was, she did not cook. She did not know how to cook. Hey, he was this. Hey, that, that, that. You know, he's not giving money. He's doing this. Fine. Calm down oh, and think about it. What did I do she was, she to contribute not, to the death of this marriage? It's a bitter truth you have to tell yourself. It's a bitter truth you have to tell yourself, but you have to do it. So after what did checking, I do? take responsibility no, for the things you did wrong and ask yourself, you have to tell how can I do it better? Don't be too hard on yourself. It has happened, it has happened. Because a lot of times we want to stay in the past and we are whining, crying, thinking about the things that happened. You need to move. And the only way you can move is taking responsibility and telling yourself the things you have done wrong. Then you seek for help. In that situation, you have a lot of people telling you things you hear different voices you are confused people are saying this people are saying that what i tell people is stay away from people who, that will tell you what you want to hear you know there are some things you want to hear just to justify some of the things you did stay away from those people 
because you won't hear you. and you won't you won't get the true picture you won't get you won't get to know the true you know, thing the, the right thing to do on that journey I, so get help with people that will tell you the truth truth will be bitter truth will hurt you but get it true picture in this wise i mean um therapists counselors professional counselors professional counselors trained therapists that can help you process help you process the journey so that you get clarity on how to move on and you'll be able to forgive yourself they will guide you through help you process yourself for the things you contributed and also guide you on how to go on the journey because it is very important and if you don't do that that's where a lot of people stay stuck and they are angry and they they are drowning and it seems as if um, they are not happy about their life because it's very important yeah thank you well, and, and they, Thank you so much. Um, so uh, we bring, that brings me to my next question. Um, so is there a particular time yeah. or like period of time allocated or allowed for somebody going through a divorce or separation um, so, to uh, go through um, before finding healing? Um, hmm. So is there a particular time? So there is not a lot of time to read because of our individual differences. Our individual differences, our experiences are also different. You know, our realities are different. And so there's not a lot of time to it. The only thing I would also like to add is people should not be too hard on themselves. When they are saying you should heal, 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 heal. No, you know, it's just like grieving because there's that grieving phase. Heal, 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 heal. People are saying heal, heal, heal. There's no specified time to it we take we take our time to heal and the truth of the matter is healing is not one off it's linear it's non-linear you know it can take one year it can take two years some people are on eight in three years you know but what we encourage people and that's why i said you should get professional counselors or therapists when you get the right support it it might minimize the length of time if you get the right support, have the right people around you, not people foiling your bitterness. Because if you have people foiling your bitterness around you, it's going to keep hurting you and you won't heal. Healing is, is not linear. It's not a one-off thing. And so trust the process as you go on the journey. Just ensure that you're in the right, with, you're in the, with the right people, you're with the, in the right environment that can speed up the healing process. And um, one other thing that I do, I, I, I tell people in my community is to have a routine. If you have a routine that you operate with every morning, it also helps you. You know how as human beings, you wake up in the morning and you're just tired. You're just sad. Maybe something just drop in your mind. Like, ah, I'm owing somebody. If that is the first thought that drops in your mind, that will affect your thinking and emotions throughout the day. The same thing for divorced people. You wake up and you just wake up and you know that your partner is not there. That sadness grips you. So if you have a routine that you start your day with, you know how we say we wake up in the morning to pray? Not necessarily prayers wake up in the morning and affirm yourself look in the mirror tell yourself beautiful things affirm yourself i'm smart i'm intelligent this is not the end of my life you know my life is beautiful you know just affirm yourself looking into the mirror affirming yourself that sets the pace for you per day and before you know it those things you're affirming yourself with your life begins to move in that direction such that consciously or unconsciously you just discover that something is changing about you. 
and you'll be surprised how your life will go. So the support and the activities we engage in determines the length of um, the, the, the length of our healing process. Yeah. How your life will go. So the support and the activities we engage in. Yeah, you've answered some of the part of the question I'm going to ask now, but I will still go ahead and so why does it take other people a long time to heal and some people it takes them shorter time to heal so, um sometimes you see some people up and about like nothing ever happened but then some people get stuck like you it takes them like forever to to heal and but then some people are already up and going with no scar with no like you don't see anything like you don't really get to even realize that something has happened to them because they're already mm. deep. Yeah, so just like I just like I said people and how, how come are they ready to just okay like i said when i was responding to the other question that um the kind of support you get determines how well you're able to come out of it then the belief that you run your life with like I said, when the I belief we run our life with is very important. And not only in divorce alone. Not well. only in divorce alone. It it just shows that um, it's just just like the same thing happening to two people, and we are reacting or responding to it differently. It is because of the belief that we have about ourselves and about that situation. So some people, if you take notes, when I started, I said divorce is not the end of your life. It's not the end of life. It's an opportunity to do it again and now in a better way. But if you have wrapped your life around marriage, and this is the reason why a lot of people are in abusive relationship and that they are not coming out of it because of the belief they have. And so those ones that it takes a long time to heal, the belief they are running their life with the environments they are the kind of support system they get for themselves and so those ones you keep drowning but the other ones you see that um are quick about it and they are up and doing again it's not as if they are not feeling it it's just that it is minimal the effect is minimal on them because they have been able to talk to themselves and they have gotten healing so this is where healing is very important for everybody that is divorced because you carry a lot of baggage in your head that weigh you down and if care is not taken i keep saying that word it drowns you and you just lose yourself it's easy Everybody another opportunity to live life again in a better way that is a beautiful um belief that we can run our life with and that and this is what i help people say nothing means anything except the meaning you give to it what meaning are you giving to divorce your life so that meaning that you give to it is the belief and it would determine how well you would come out of it or if you would drown with it. What meaning are you giving to divorce? Thank you so much for that. Yeah. So that in so divorce can actually um bring is existing new feelings well of anger of to the surface that can be difficult to manage. How can one recognize when they are starting to feel angry yeah. or even depressed and check on their thinking and emotions um, and physical sensations? Um, all right how can one recognize when whatever emotion anybody that is yeah, going through the divorce whatever emotion they feel is very valid because for crying out loud mm. that's a major part of your life that is being affected the trajectory of your life is right. is being affected it's being changed you already planned. This is the way I want to live your la my life. You trusted that person. You believe. You love that person. And the depth of betrayal. So you'll be angry. You'll be confused. You will name all the bitterness. Name all the, the emotions. All those emotions will come up. And they are very valid if you're feeling it. 
And the reason why we keep saying that healing, getting healing, going for therapy is very important. So anybody, so we can't say that people should not feel angry. They, sh they will feel angry. They will feel bad about themselves. For example, a woman that has to leave living in a, in a beautiful house to live in one room, one room and a parlor or a face me, I face you apartment where she has to share the toilet, a bathroom with strangers or a lady that has to move back to her parents' house. You know, that's a, that's quite a lot. So saying that the person will not be angry, will just be deceiving herself and will not be fair on that person. So anger, yeah. Anger is, 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 is normal. It's one of the emotions that we feel. But after you have felt that feeling, get help, get healing. Now, now saying that somebody now feel angry on that journey, and that's why healing is not one-off. It's gradual. Because even after going for therapy, that person will now, get to be triggered. You'll be triggered once in a while. You see beautiful couple on social media, you feel that pinch, you feel that a bit of anger. You see the children need something as a woman and you can't even talk to your ex. You feel angry, you need money to do something and you feel the anger. There's this loneliness that sets in because of companionship you have lost that you feel triggered but what therapy now does is it helps you take off these things gradually it helps you take off this thing such that so one of the things that the therapy does is give help you to change narrative such that initially when you see such things and you're angry you start telling yourself and that's where the belief so it's like a belief change it's, it's like a belief change of putting up a narrative management. Yeah, I'm going to have a beautiful one. Yes, I'm on the journey. I'm healing. I'm going to have a beautiful one. So instead of feeling all the emotions, feeling the anger, you're telling yourself, you're, you're affirming yourself, you know, and, and that's why that affirmation um, exercise is very important in the morning. If you're able to set that course in the morning, then the rest of your day is sorted. And you wake up in the morning, you tell your subconscious mind and your conscious mind what it should hold. Then you are sorted for, for the day. Such that if, if anybody, even it can be somebody that will say something to you, you just look at that person and you won't feel it. Because you have already set the course, you have already set the tone of your day and this is the reason why so when i'm saying the way you start your day affirm yourself and not, it's not a religious thing it is because it has its effects on our subconscious mind and our conscious mind and it helps us to live in that direction and um while i was also saying that it's it's healing is lean is non-linear because when you affirm yourself i don't know how many of you have seen um the rudder that they use on driving so i'll use the word literary word driving the ship you know when you're driving a car you have the steering the rudder that you use to, to navigate the ship yes let me use the word navigate the rudder that we use navigating the ship you know the ship will not you know for a car when you turn like this, the car will turn immediately. But for the ship, you keep turning, 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 turning. Then you see the ship move and change direction. It does not move immediately. What that means is it has been moving gradually. But if you're watching, you just see that all of a sudden, you just see the ship change direction. If you are watching any movie, that the ship is being um is it driven i don't know the word they use for a ship now <laughs> you will see how the ship you will see how the ship changes direction after the rudder has moved moved moved, moved right so I, i'm using that illustration to say that 
our words are powerful. And as you speak and affirm yourself every day, you tell yourself what you want every day in the morning. The morning is the brain time. That morning is the brain time. Nothing has entered it. So you're telling your brain, you're telling your mind how to operate. And by the time you do that over and over again, continuously, you're consistent with it. You will see your life, the trajectory of your life, moving in the direction of the words that you're speaking. Such that nothing like anger will mean anything to you anymore. That is where the peace that passes all human understanding. Sorry, I'm a Christian and I'm going to use the scriptures. You know, when the good book says, you know, when the good book says, the peace that passes all human understanding, that is what you will feel. I am bold to say that is what I feel. All the things I'm saying are the things I did. I wanted my life to be different. I desire to go through my divorce without any pain. Was it easy initially? No, but I worked at it. I worked at it. And that is where the consistency sets in. So people say we wake up in the morning to read our Bible and pray. For me, I didn't read my Bible and pray. Maybe you will call my affirmations prayers, but I was saying those words into my life. So people say, I am smart. I am intelligent. My life is beautiful. Only beautiful things permitted to happen to me. You know, I was saying all those things. I have insight, foresight, and direction. I have insight. I know what to do part time. I know what to say part time. I am in the right place at the right time with the right people. You know, this were the words I was speaking over myself every morning. I am in the and so the peace and the serenity that I enjoy now. I worked at it. Anger will eat you up, guys. Anger, bitterness, you know, pain, heart will eat you up. You will drown and you will you, you will look older than your age. I'm talking to both men and women. I'm talking to both men and women. You don't want to take chances. If you work at it, you'll be better for it. I hope I answered that question. Yes, <laughs> yes, Thank you have. You. You've exceeded my expectation even in that one, which is too good. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings me to my fifth question. Um, during a divorce, a person's concern for their well-being. They may be thinking about their children, their finances, um, other things, or and what people might be saying about them. But sometimes they tend to forget about themselves and about their well-being. So how would you encourage someone going through divorce or separation to stop and take time for themselves, for self-care? Because self-care is not selfishness. Yeah. So um, somehow everything I've been saying is self-care. If you take notes, everything I've been saying is self-care. And um, what people will say children, so, finance, it's a lot, everything. all these things. They are the things that drowns you that I was talking about. They drown you, you know? By the time you put all these things, when well, you wake up in the morning, school fees is what you wake up to. You wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, if I'm walking on the streets, people are talking about me and you don't want to go to the office. Oh, people will, oh, should I go to church? Should I go for that party? No, I don't want to go for that wedding. Me that my wedding just ended. My marriage just ended. You know, all those things, they will weigh you down. And just like she said, self-care, 
the big self-care is take responsibility yes i have done this i might all those things i was maybe i i, I didn't handle it well i did that for myself i sat myself down i did it i pointed out i wrote it in my journal the things i did to contribute to it so it has happened maybe what's the next thing well pay attention to yourself even with your children you can't give what you don't have this is the reason why this is the reason why um we label children from broken home because they don't get good attention and the truth of the matter is they are part of the equation really but because the mother or the father is hurting they're not working on themselves then the children are neglected so i'm saying this to say part of the reason is because you need to be full because it is from your abundance that you can give out of your own abundance is so you need to work on yourself to pick your journey to pick to move on in life to continue in life to live your life to the fullest because you also have a purpose I used to jokingly say that, hey, let me tell you something. You are here on this earth for a purpose. You won't get to heaven. And God will say, oh, because you married that naughty girl. Or because you married that wicked man. That is why your life was like this. And you were not able to fulfill purpose. Okay, I will excuse you. Enter heaven. Mm -mm. That's not the way to be. You are here for a purpose. You have an assignment. And so if you allow yourself to drown with all these things that were listed, then you will not fulfill purpose. Make yourself happy or anybody around you happy. And that is not the best. You are human. And so marriage does not define you. That's part of the belief that people run their life with and um, things now happen and they can't, they can't put themselves together. Marriage does not define you. You have your individual identity. Know who you are. It's part of the things we do in our coaching community. We take you through that process. After the therapy, then we, we start the finding me we start the finding me journey. The finding me journey is where we talk about knowing who you are. If you know who you are, you'll be able to do the right thing for yourself. And that's where self-awareness comes in. And so you'll be able to be committed to turning the trajectory of your life by turning the rudder using your mouth to call your reality because you are the creator of your reality nobody nobody when god created you he said everything you need for life and godliness has been deposited inside you already everything you know after creation after creation and god rested he has not created anything he stopped creating and put the power because we are in his image after his likeness. So he has put that power in us to also create. So you are the creator of your reality. You are the only one that, that creates the life that you want. Put the power. We already said we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Everything is inside. So if you allow yourself to be drowned by the fears of life, by the concerns of life, then there's no way you can take care of yourself. So you yeah, see what I said? So this platform, I don't know, might not be enough to talk about all those things. Your belief, what are the beliefs you run your life with? Affirm yourself. Speak the right words into your life. I don't know the kind of divorce you went through. It might be the most domestic violence. You know, might be verbal abuse, might be physical abuse, you know, it might be whatever reasons, because people leave their marriage for different reasons. And the magnitude of the pain is different. I'm not, I'm not negating that fact. I'm not negating that fact. But like I said, you are here for a purpose. 
magnitude of the pain. You are here for a purpose. Like, Can you pick yourself up not, not that and leave the life? Like I said, and live the life. And as you go on that journey, you see your light shining. I don't know and if there, there is it only Christians that watch this program. There are words you can affirm yourself with. There are words you can affirm yourself with. The path of the just man shines brighter and better. Don't let anything hold you down. Do everything you need to do to work on yourself. We also usually have a lot of women coming out of their marriage with financial challenges because we, we are raised to depend on our partners to give us everything. And so when the marriage collapse, you, you are stuck and you can't do anything. That is a time to pick yourself up and do something. I tell you, um, it was after my divorce, I did my master's, I did my PhD, you know, I was just working at it because I want to be a better person. I want to be a better person for my daughter, you know, I don't want her to look back and say, oh, because my parents' home broke, that's why my life is like this. No. So I needed to put in myself so that I can pour in her. Right? So, and that was why I said, you can't give what you don't have. If you don't work on yourself, if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't take care of yourself, it will be difficult to take care of your children. That's where you have the mother shouting, being angry, aggressive, beating the children, you know, abusing the children because she's feeling the pain. She's not even taking care of her own mental health. And so she's inflicting the children's mental health. So please seek help if you're going through divorce. Seek help from professionals, not just anybody. Seek help from professionals. They will help you. This self-care we're talking about, they will help you see how to go about it so that it can um, come easy for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Halibe. Thank you. Thank you so much. So how can someone going through divorce be able to um, help their children survive the process so or the have, journey uh, of the divorce and preventing them from you. being stuck in the middle and also how can this parent like the well, man and the woman the husband and wife now co-parent effectively without allowing their anger the towards each other the affect their journey. children hmm. that's another dimension to this, this divorce and i always say the children are part of the equation and they are usually being neglected you know um when divorce mm -hmm. happened the mother the woman have people around her asking her talking to her the support the man too have his friends and their, his family mm -hmm. but nobody remember the children nobody remember the children we all just assume is it that we assume well, we just don't Pay attention to that part. The only thing we pay attention to is how they will feed and wear clothes and go to school. But it's more than that. Just as it affects the parents mentally and emotionally, the children also go through the pain. The children also go through the pain. So it's a lot of work, especially for the mother. Or whoever gets the custody of the children. It's a lot of work because you are paying attention to yourself. At the same time, you are giving an undivided attention to these children. It's very important. Please, they are part of the equation and their mental and emotional health is also at stake. And we need to pay attention to it. So when divorce happens, like you said, everybody is angry. Very the man is angry, the woman is angry. But you have brought these children to the world. You have brought them here. So you can't afford to use your stupidity to destroy this children's life. So you need to work at it. You need to be able to swallow your own pride and put in place systems and structures 
sure that we help the two of you, two of you co-parent without, with ease. Co-parent with ease. It's very, 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 very important. You need to learn to co-parent and this will include swallowing your pride putting your ego aside when it comes to the children when it comes to having conversation about the children swallow your your pride set it aside and have healthy conversation there are times the woman wants to get back to the man there are times the woman wants to get back to the man there are times the man wants to get back to the to the woman get back at the woman and they are hurting the children you don't want to do that you don't want to do that i know a particular family currently um the woman is 86 now and um, the first daughter that she left in her first marriage is 65 now and it's so difficult and, it's so uh, difficult for the two of them to relate. It's so difficult marriage. because the and lady has also now grown up with and bitterness and anger. She's full of anger. She's so full of pains. And you wonder what's eating her up. Yes. What exactly? It was because of that separation. With bitterness and anger. So please. She's and so this is part of the reason why children from broken you know did you hear that children from broken home they are labeled they are stigmatized but you see this was part of the things that i was thinking about when my marriage ended like hey god they will stigmatize my daughter and all that so i told myself I told myself, I'm going to def I'm going to redefine this process. And it's not going to affect my daughter. My daughter is going to be happy. My daughter is going to, she's not going to see it. She won't even understand it. So I told myself, that's exactly what I did. She relates well with her dad. When we want to talk about how we have conference meetings, you know, and we ensure that we are in our best behavior because of her. When she we really are talking about her, dad, when she's there, we, we are in our best behavior. Because if care is not taken, you will raise children that will hate you in the future. Because they will, they are also going through pains. And so we need to pay attention to them. So what we now did for the children, for, for um, Sunshine Hub community, what I did now is, um, because we know that it's difficult for children to, for parents that are going through this pain to handle their children. So we designed a, a, a curriculum, a course, a class, a, a six days, um, six days course, six weeks course for six days online people can um, it's self-paced people can subscribe for it and the children we just watch we have done the recording of the classes talking to the children helping them navigate their parents divorce you know and helping them stay focused helping them know that see they have their own life their parents have, have decided on what they want for themselves but that their choice should not affect the children's life so so I designed we designed a curriculum to work with the children just to help um, um, parents, who, children whose parents are going through um, divorce. It's it's a lot actually, but we need to know that the children are part of the equation and we need to pay attention to them. Swallowing our pride, swallowing our pride. And um, I want to at this point say that women, please, because that man was not a good husband does not mean that man is not a good father please don't deprive the children access to their father and if it is the father that have the access um the custody to the children please don't deprive their mother's access to the children children because she was a terrible wife does not mean she's a bad mother please allow the children have access to their both parents this helps a lot 
in their developmental Everyone. stages. Thank you very much. A bad and now the children have so it is possible um from what i've gathered from what you've said this helps it is possible to co-parent for the sake of the children and without um putting the children in the middle and forgetting about their own mental health yeah so do you suggest you've mentioned that you did um when you started would I would um like more light on this one? So would you suggest um self reflection to understand what actually went wrong in a former marriage to help one redress um to make a redress for maybe future marriage or future relationship or if somebody decides that okay we are going to amend the old marriage or the former marriage and go back with my ex. So would you suggest self-reflection because of that? Future marriage or future relationship or oh yes, self-reflection is very important. And I remember mentioning that at the beginning that um uh, you need to sit down and take audit yourself. What are the things you did wrong? What are the things you did right? And saying all that is part of preparing you for um whatever comes or whatever happens next if you want to go into another relationship or um yeah. miracle happen and you're going back and to your ex it's very important we take mm. um we take um what, what's that word now is to, to audit ourselves and um take stock yeah. it's very important we take stock on on that it is to help us prevent whatever whatever we have done um in time past it is to help us prevent it so before you got married mm -hmm. before anybody every one of us got married we came into our marriages with baggages we came into our marriages with baggages a lot of baggages from our upbringing before you know we came into marriage with pain from our upbringing, from the experiences of life that were not sorted. Pain from, from the environment which we grew up from that were not sorted. And that's why we found ourselves in divorce. And by the time you are leaving that marriage, you have added baggage. You have added pain. You have added bitterness. You have added all those things. So you have times two of the baggage that you entered the marriage with. And you're living with it. So your new life, you have found yourself alone. People will hurt you. People will batter you and all that. So you are full of baggages, pain and all that. So there's a need to sit down and reflect and heal. And this is why we're talking about healing. Before you move on, statistics says 35% of first marriages 35% of first marriages end in divorce. And 65% of second marriages end in divorce. That means people who have been divorced and married, gone, went into another marriage, the percentage is higher than the, that of the first marriage. You know, you want to wonder that why? She was married before. She should know how it is. But it is more than that. It is more than that. You need to heal. You need to drop all those baggages and start the life afresh. Well, you can't do that if you don't reflect, be aware, and get healing for yourself. So there's a need to check ourselves. You don't want to go into marriage and... Um, you, and they'll start saying, oh, it's generational cost. Excuse me. It's not generational cost. It's lack of information. It's lack of information. It's lack of understanding. It's because you're going, you went into that one again with times two of the baggages. The, the trauma of your life. The pain of your life. You're not going to marry. There's no way you will not be triggered. There's no way you will not bleed on this new person. You know how we say hot people, hot people, hurting people, hot people. 
you will bleed on this in on the on your partner in this new marriage, and that partner will not be able to stand you. You think you can pretend, you can pretend, but excuse me, pressure is a revealer. Some things will start happening in that marriage that will be bringing out the real character, the anger that you have buried, that you have suppressed. All the things, all your shadow, your dark, dark parts will start coming up. And that's why we have that statistic, that high statistic of second marriage. Because people just feel, oh, I'm lonely. Oh, I need companion. And they go into another marriage. No, don't do that. Get help. That's why we keep talking about get help. Very important. Very, very, very important. And reflection, yeah, is part of the things that will help you. Get help. That's why we keep talking about help. So, um... What you've said so very, far, very, very is before important. you get into another relationship or even yeah. into another marriage, or even before you go back to that old marriage, make yeah. sure mm -hmm. you have to go through self reflection and, if possible, go through healing. Yeah. Or even before you go back to that. So, what advice would you give someone going through divorce or separation, go keep tabs on their ex spouse? to see what they are doing on social media or maybe in life in yeah. general. Like they keep asking people questions. What is this man doing? What is he up to? Like the person blocks them and then they still go and find another way of knowing what they are doing. It's still part of not healing. You know, when you are not healed and you are feeding yourself with different lies, you become a monitoring spirits. <laughs> become monitoring spirit you want to see what the other person is doing and at times you even want to compete you see you don't need all this you don't need all this just focus on your life you don't need all the distractions if possible mute them or unfollow if possible for some time Focus at least to, the, to, the, to, to, to get yourself back together to be healthy again such that you can take anything that you see it's not advisable that you now become a monitoring spirit and you're now checking their status checking their stories checking their instagram going to follow them that's even stressful that's stressful and you, you cause yourself a lot of pain. If you see a crazy partner, that one will run you much. Yeah, you want to check. Oh, yeah, now be checking and they will be doing things that will make you feel terrible, make you feel bad. So you don't need it. You don't need it. Yeah. If you see a um, how can someone with um friends or family members going through divorce? Offer non judgmental but quality support. Non judgmental but quality support. You know, a lot of times we just assume that we have we have the right words to speak. But the truth of the matter is if you have not been there, if you are not if you have not been in my shoes, you don't know the right word to speak. Honestly. So a lot of times, most of the time, I think silence, silence is the best. You're with them. And um, so when I mean silence, don't, don't raise the topic of their marriage. Don't talk about their children. Don't judge them. Just like you said, non-judgmental. It's not a time to say, see your child, see what your child is doing. Ah, hey, this guy wants to become, you want to become like a father. You want to be like a, no. That we hurt the person more. It's not the time to say all that. It's not the time to find fault in what they are doing. What you can do to support them, because it is a loss. It's like a part of you is taken out. And that's why we keep, I kept talking about healing, healing, healing. It's, it's, it's deep. Loss. It's a deep heart. It's a deep wound. And that's why the healing itself is not even a one-off thing. You can't take paracetamol and the eddy and it will go. Mm -mm. It lingers. It's, it's, it's there. 
so you don't want to be saying things that will be bruising the wound or that will be making them feel angry that will be triggering things no you don't want to do that what you do is yeah. just create activities that will not remind them travel together go on a picnic just to help them just to alleviate your mind just to take their mind off the pain love them there's a need a lot of times the woman especially needs the financial support instead of just judging them and condemning them and pointing at their flaws just give the financial support i i bet you they appreciate it without you even judging them they're already judging themselves because you're giving the money in love and so they're like oh, oh god if not because of where i am now look at me collecting money from people they're already judging themselves so you don't need to say anything just show them unconditional love and provide for them as you know whatever they need support them with all the love and attention they need and i think um that will speak a volume and help them as they go through uh, their pain them as yes, I use the mic. Um, that was and help them as they go through. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. It was breaking a bit, so I can hear you now. Yes, I use the mic. Sorry, I didn't get that. So it's raining here, so there's a lot of noise. Oh, yes, uh, it was breaking a bit, but I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Sorry, I didn't get that. It's okay. raining. There's a lot of noise. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, it was breaking. Yeah, I can hear you now. Can hear you. Okay. Okay. Um. So research shows that having good social support makes all the difference during difficult times like um divorce or separation. Having quality people you can call on and look out for. Um, makes so all the difference can you please emphasize the need for the right support you've already mentioned um something like that instead of engaging with people who will judge or condemn you sorry sorry i didn't i didn't get the question okay i will repeat myself um i said research shows that having good social sorry, support sorry, I, didn't, I didn't get the question can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, okay. Research shows that having a good social support network makes all the difference during difficult during difficult period like um divorce or separation. Having quality people who can help you and people who you can actually call on to help you when you need um support. How can people how can you emphasize the need for a support system instead of engaging with people who can who will condemn or judge you okay so um i think to to cap that question up i would share my yeah my p's so i have these five p's that i tell people i hope i can remember the five the first one is positive people have the have positive people around you not people who will say things that will hurt you not people who will fuel your ego not people who will tell you what you want to hear not people who will come to say ah i saw your husband yesterday oh the stupid man she has a girl in the car hmm, you don't know she has moved on not people like that and not people who will come to say hmm, did you see your wife it's, his it's her neighbor that she's, she's dating. You don't need people. You don't need those stories. You'll be hurting yourself the more. You don't need those stories. You don't need those people around you. So have positive people around you. You don't need those stories. Positive affirmation. I cannot overemphasize that. Positive affirmation. Positive energy what you do for yourself the kind of atmosphere you create for yourself what are the kind of movies you watch 
what are the kind of places you go to right what you do for you kind positive of um what's the other p now uh places positive people positive affirmation yes positive narratives positive narratives somebody says something you know how we read in meanings to something you just read a negative meaning you just yeah. everybody is talking about you people are talking on their own no but it is you even if they are talking about somebody change the narrative change the interpretation i said it the other time that nothing means anything except the meaning you give to it so change the narrative for yourself somebody said something you're like oh okay what was that for me oh really oh no i i, I didn't see it that way my marriage broke oh just just thank god with me that i came out of it somebody said a life like, oh, that i didn't lose my mind I, I, I you know that kind of a thing just be positive about your interpretation the interpretation you give to situation I know in this part of the world, in Africa, we are good to read the negative meaning to everything. It's not the time that you need it. Let people, let people say, uh -uh, don't you understand? Tell them you understand. But this is the understanding that you have of it. Whatever negative thing. Instead of you to be angry. Don't get angry. Change the narrative for yourself. And it will work for you. If you, if you have this, your social life, in fact, it will affect the, the people you follow on Instagram, on Facebook. It will, it will also affect that. That's part of a social group. That's part of the social... Because this, this internet thing, this social media thing is damaging a lot of things about us and we need to pay attention to it. Who are the people you're following on social media? You need to censor it. What are the news you listen to? Cultivate the habit of listening and watching and reading only positive things, things that add value to you, not things that will make you sad. These are the social things that we, we bring into ourselves. If you want to go party, party. Enjoy yourself. Don't sit and, and be sulking. You will drown. And you will now be saying you do not get somebody else to marry you. You don't want that. <laughs> Have I answered that question? Yes. Very well. Thank you so much. And this welcome. brings me to my almost the last question. You already made, made mention of how the sunshine hub helps people going through divorce and how it helps their children. So now I would um, like to know how can people connect to this support system or support group to be able to thrive after the event? If you can share, um, somebody has already asked a question on Facebook, so how can she connect to the Sunshine Hub? So if you can maybe share an email. If, um, okay. Um, um, yeah, I can share, I can share my email. I can share my email. Um, so let me share my email with you so that you can you can copy and paste it. Is that possible? Um, uh, yeah, I can share. I can share my yeah. email. Oh yeah. Very I can possible. share my email. Um, so let me share my email with you so that you can copy and paste it. Is that possible? Yeah. Um, there you see it. And my WhatsApp number. Thank you. Thank you. And my WhatsApp
Did you get it? Yeah, I got the, I got the, sorry. One minute, I'm trying to copy the. Talk to. And that's my WhatsApp number. Talk to. So my, my email address is talk, that's C-A-L-K, to figure two, then my name, ebunlomo, at gmail.com. And my WhatsApp number is 08039-324145. If you're watching from outside the country, you just not need to add plus two, three, four. That's the Nigerian code. If you're watching from outside the country, you add plus two, three, four, then eight, zero, three, nine, three, two, four, one, four, five. Plus two, three, four. That's the Nigerian code. If you're watching from outside the country, you add plus two, three, four, then eight, zero, three, nine, so we've almost if anybody has a question, I have lots of people here on Facebook. If anyone has a question for Dr. Ibn, I think she would do justice to this because this is her field. She's an expert in this. And she was, I'm definitely sure she would be able to help. So if you have any question, you can um, just write your question in the comment section here. Like write a comment. If you don't have a question, I would love to communicate with her. I've already put her phone number and her email address. You can contact her. She is willing and able. So the thing is, you, you people are willing and able to help you, not just anybody. She is willing and she's able to help. Address, you can contact her. She is willing and able. So the thing is, you people are and able. We will give two minutes and see if there's a question. Just give two minutes and see if there's a question. And if there's none, then we'll just wrap it up. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think there are no questions at the moment. Somebody was just asking how to connect to the Sunshine Hub. So what is your closing remark, ma'am, for the people who are watching at the moment and those who would watch the replay? Because I know lots of people would watch the recording. I'm going to post it on YouTube and I, I'm sure people are going to watch it. And I have lots of people that I'm going to share this with. They, some of them forgot, I think, to come online because some of them joined in the morning. And some people are still um, taking a rest because it's Saturday. So if you can just share your closing remark with, with everybody with us. All right, thank you very much, um, Yina Sim, for this beautiful opportunity. And thank you for watching, um, everyone that is watching right now and for everyone that will watch later. Um, my last thought will be that divorce is not the end of your life. It's not the end of your life, it's the beginning it's another opportunity to do it again and do it better. 
it's not the place to start. I know some people will be like, start what again? Oh, they said if you if you are divorced, you cannot marry again, especially as a woman. Says who? Maybe we are not serving the same God because the God that I serve is a very kind and a beautiful, a loving father, right? A lot, there's a lot to that explanation. And so mm. it's not the end of your life. You can talk about your divorce without feeling any pain. And right now, mm. there are days I've even forgotten that I'm divorced. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it is because the journey has been, it wasn't easy at the beginning, but right now mm. it's, is sweet and the fact that i'm able to co-parent peacefully with my ex makes it mm. easier for me that's why i said at times i've even forgotten because we relate well you know we mm. call mm. we talk we chat not for anything we understand our boundaries right mm. but we do this and that gives our our daughter peace of mind She's able to talk about her dad, talk about her mom confidently without holding back. So divorce is not the end of your life. It's a beginning of another beautiful life for you. And you are the only one that can create that reality for yourself. Remember when I started, I said, I was looking at the people around me. I'm like, am I going to be like these people? And I told myself, no, I don't want to be like this people. I don't want to end up like this people. I'm mm. going to redefine this journey and create my own reality. And this is the reality I've been able to create for myself with God's help. Mm. So you are the creator of your reality. Nothing means anything except the meaning that you give to it. So be ready to give beautiful meaning to the things happening to you. Please, you can't do this by praying. Get help. You need a professional to walk you on that journey. That was what helped me. That was what helped me. You need a professional to walk you on that journey. Thank you very much once again for having me. And um, yeah, well done for all the beautiful things you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for honoring this invitation and thank you to everybody that is still alive with us and thank you to the people that are going to watch the recording. And for me, for, from me, from what I have gleaned from this meeting is calm down. That's the first thing I, read, I wrote on my paper. Yeah. Calm down. Divorce is not final. I know this. But even is divorced, and she knows she is here to help people who are going through divorce. And the fact that you are divorced does not mean you are less human. Because when I um contacted you like four months ago or three months ago, and I was contemplating this whole thing, and I put it out there, the poster, and then I put it out there. Somebody, some people were asking me, "Why are you putting this together? Is that does that mean you support divorce?" I was like, what do you mean? Do I support divorce? Do I have to support divorce for me to help people going through divorce? Family is my buyer, and I would love to see my families thrive. But the fact that something happened does not mean I would love people who are divorced less. Mm -hmm. They are human beings, and they deserve our love. They deserve our empathy. They deserve even our sympathy, mm -hmm. and they deserve our help. They deserve our support. I have friends and I have family members who are divorced and the fact that they are divorced does not mean I, I will abandon them because they are divorced. So if people hate you because you're divorced, you can't, you can't join them and hate yourself. Mm -hmm. Love yourself. If they hate you, you have to love yourself because you are the only one who is living with yourself and you are the only one who knows where the shoe hurts. So even mm -hmm. people who are divorced like you or people who are who will be divorced like people who are divorced might not really go through the same journey like you mentioned with everybody. Yeah. We all have our different journey in life. So what works mm -hmm. for somebody might not really work for another person in the same way. 
So you love yourself, even when other people hate you or even when they are judging you. You actually know what you've been through for you to come out of a relationship. For me, I see people who are even divorced as people who are bold enough to say enough is enough to something who is not Absolutely. something that is not working compared to somebody who is in an abusive relationship. And mm -hmm. some people have died in an abusive relationship, especially domestic violence, and have refused to come out because of that. So we're not supporting divorce. We love people who are divorced because they are human too. The fact that you're divorced, we love you, God loves you. That is the cross of the matter. God loves you and you should love yourself or you love yourself, which we know that for you to be able, able to come on this meeting, we know that you love yourself. And so healing is important and healing is possible. No matter what has happened, whether it was your fault or it is the man's fault or the woman's fault, healing is possible. You can find healing and that is why Dr. Ibn is here to help. I might, I might not be able to help you the way she would help you. So this is, um, we have her number on Facebook. We have her email address. If you would love to connect with her, it would be very important. We actually would love you to find that support instead of you wallowing in pity, pity and just staying there lonely or alone on your mm -hmm. own without people understanding what you're going through. So your healing is your responsibility and that is why you should connect with Dr. Ibon. And whatever it is you're feeling, it is really valid. Your feelings are valid, but please, excuse me, do not remain there. Seek help and contact Dr. Ibon. She's going to help you and she's willing and able to help you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. And this brings us to the end of the meeting. I really appreciate you, ma'am. I can't be grateful enough. Thank you, thank you, wow. and thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for joining this meeting. I am sincerely grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice night. All right. Thank you. Have a nice morning. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>